Be strong in the Lord. Be strong, brothers and sisters. Do not just give up when it's too uh, early. Some of you are so close to your miracle. You are so close to your freedom, to your deliverance. It does not matter how long you have been kept captive. Be strong. When you look at the apostles, they went through terrible things. They were put in prison. They were flogged. They were beaten. But they were strong. In fact, they were uh, 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 shaken and, and, and thrown out, stoned to an extent of death. But they did not allow that to get into their way. They continued doing what God told them to do. They did not give up. They were strong. In fact, the more they persecuted them, the more they became strong. The more they became... Because their strength did not come from human beings. Their strength did not come from their money. Their strength did not come from uh, the governments in the present time. Their strength came from God. That's why you see I'm telling you to be strong in the Lord. Today's verse, uh, today's scripture is in the book of Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. And it reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and against blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts, of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, stand. Scripture says, be strong in the Lord. Be strong. It tells you, brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. There is power in his might. There is power. So be strong. Now the scripture says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil has numerous wiles. He has a lot of them. That's why he says, put on the full armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Not half an armor of God. A lot of people have been destroyed. A lot of people have not reached their destination. It's because they have put on themselves a half an armor. And they think that that will protect them. An example I would give to you is a soldier who goes to war. Yes, he has a gun, but he does not have a bulletproof vest. So when a bullet, when, when the enemy fires a shot towards his chest, he's destroyed. Because he did not protect himself. Had he put on the bulletproof vest, he would have survived. He would have survived. And there are some soldiers who go to war and they are up against their adversaries, but they are out of bullets. Their guns have no bullets. They cannot fire the enemy. The enemy is firing at you, but they are not firing at the enemy. They do not have a defense system. What happens to them? They will be destroyed. 
So a lot of Christians go to what we call a spiritual warfare without the whole armor of God. They have no word in them. When they go out to pray, it is their own words that they start speaking out. Instead of speaking the word of God. Remember the word of God is referred to as a sword. It is your weapon. How dare you go to war without a weapon? So instead of attacking the enemy, they have no word in them. That's why you see it's very easy for the enemy to come and attack them, to lie to them. And they will give in to their word, the lies of the enemy. It's because they have no word. The enemy had to test Jesus himself. When Jesus was tempted, the enemy used the word of God. But how did Jesus respond to that? He responded with the word of God. He said, it is written. When the enemy comes with, his, with the word, respond with the word of God. That is how you fight. That is how you fight. So put on the full armor of God. Now, 12 says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, this dark, of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, brothers and sisters. Your fight is not against Billy. Your fight is not against Winston. Your battle is not against uh, Tom. It is not against Sharon. It is not against your brother. They are not your enemies. Those people are just used by the devil himself. Your fight is not against your boss. Yes, he may be fighting against you, but there is a spirit behind him. And the scripture clearly states that the war is against principalities, against powers, against rulers. These are the things you need to underline so that you may know. It is against darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. A lot of people think that the devil is down beneath the ground. They think that the, the devil lives beneath the ground. That is, a, that is, a, that is a, a lie. But the enemy is in spiritual places, in heavenly places. Heavenly places. That is where he resides. That is why you see a lot of media companies are being controlled by the devil himself to air out lies, to speak lies. So your war is not against flesh and blood. It is against principalities. Know your enemy before you go to war. Know your adversary. Now I love this. Verse 13 says, a very important verse. It says, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all, stand. Stand, just stand. After taking all, after putting on the arm of God, stand. Do not try to fight battles that are not yours. Do not wage war against uh, principalities. Where, do not fight that battle. It is not your battle. You have already won the battle. Leave the battle to God. Victory is yours. The battle is the Lord's, but victory is yours. So stand. After, after putting on the whole arm of God, stand. Now, I will not go into the whole uh, scripture to tell you what the whole arm of God is because there's a helmet of salvation, there's a breastplate, uh, there, there are a lot of things, there's a sword. and uh, So you can go and read the whole scripture in your a meditation time and get to know what the whole arm of God is. And God will even reveal to you more 
powerful revelations. God will teach you. The Holy Spirit will instruct you. He will teach you all things. Well, I'm, I've come to the end of this message. And go ahead and leave your comments. Let me know in the comment section. And until next time, Shalom.